Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. Today, we're going to continue with our playthrough here of Mrs. Thatcher's War, published by White Dogs Game, White Dog Games, sorry, and designed by Ben Madison. Now, at the risk of sounding like a soap opera, when we last left our program, uh, I'm up to now, you can maybe see down here on the track, I'm up to game turn nine. Some things have happened uh, over here. Some good news and some bad news. The really good news is the following. First of all, let me zoom in. I am ready, as promised with last video, to go ahead and get ready to move the boots on the ground. So I landed my guys at San Carlos last turn. Um, Pretty good shape strategically overall. Uh, I was able to eliminate, you can see there at the top, the one air unit at Pebble Island. I did fail down here to get the one at, uh, I believe it's called Green, Goose Green, yeah. So, not so good with that. However, some other good news, the enemy's exoset stock has gone down. As you can see there on the game turn, I'm getting ready to use my sauce marker again. So that is awesome. And as you can see, my BBC is way on top side. Now, a couple of bad pieces of news. Um, yeah, we'll finish bad news, and then we'll go over some other good news. Some bad news here, you can see down here, I've got um, my helicopters are not coming, like, forever. I rolled a six on that, which was a bummer. And the Pope, John Paul II, um, who I think was a cool dude just as a person, let alone anything else, um, he's going to be influencing things for quite a while now, so... I mean, he's a man of peace. What are you going to do? All right. Now, other good news. Let's move over here to the strategic map, give you a quick update, and then let's get moving. By the way, the big green die there, again, I highly recommend if you play solo games and you have to go back and forth, um, like I do being a stay-at-home dad, find yourself a nice little marker to remind yourself. The other thing I did, you can see here at the top, and I'll zoom in a little bit, uh, I put the dice up there for the weather result to remind myself also, oh, yeah, that's where I left off. So... The other good news is this. If you look at the map there carefully, there are no Argentinian warships. I sunk them both. And I did it with minimal amount of hubbub in the international press. Because once you do that, you have to roll two dice and subtract that from the BBC. Uh, the one time I rolled a four, the other time I rolled a six. So ten for both of them, that's really, really good. And I've had some good luck with some of the crazy stuff too with some of our allies, sometimes that in quotes. I've had a lot of support from the United States every time I've had that event. Uh, Haig has won the battle, and he's won with some nice big die rolls, so that's why the BBC is up so high. All right, so let's go through this turn, and we will go through boots on the ground too, but of course, as always, we're going to start over here with the strategic map. So, here we go. Now, it is turn 8 through 15, and I rolled a 6, so the weather is fair. Blue skies smiling at me. I think that's how it goes. I don't know. All right. So I did the weather. Sauce. I can't do the sauce till next turn, so that's a bummer. Helicopters. Well, we just talked about that issue a little bit ago. Diplomatic feint. I don't need a diplomatic feint. I'm up at level 16. Okay. Grupos phase. Let's see where the grupos are going to be. So the grupos die roll is two threes. Hmm. Well, obviously they're going to try and keep me from moving too far as part of their plan. However, if you look at the map there carefully, um, Augusto Pinochet has given me access to uh, radar stations. Woohoo! So I will definitely be sending somebody up to deal with the problem there um, and try to eliminate that issue. Alright, now the task force. No warships to attack. Okay, I command the guns. No, I'm not going to do that. Supply ground forces. Now, I am going to do that because in order to get your people moving, you have got to get them supply. So let's go over that here because that's something new. And that's in rule section six. Now, supply and ground forces. Here's your choices. No escorts. If there's none, one British stack can move. That's it. Right? It will be supplied. If I provide one escort, then two British stacks will be supplied. And if I put them both in there, all three. But here's the thing. I don't want to... I don't want to ease up on my relentless pounding of the Grupos, because I've done a pretty good job of keeping them under control. And right now, just a quick count, I've got, let's see, uh, looks like one, two, three, 
for about four airplanes have been knocked out of the game on the Argentinian side at this point. So that's good news. Um, by the way, speaking of other good news, if you look at the exclusion zone there, uh, I got quite a few of the Sidewinder events. So all the planes are there now, which is awesome. All right. So let's see. How many escorts do I want to put? Well, I'll tell you what, for the purposes of this, and again, there's some other factors you have to consider that can influence your supply. The BBC level. If the BBC level is seven or less, you're going to have a stack that's unsupplied. Well, I'm all the way up at 16. I'm not real worried about the BBC pummeling on me here right now, unless something really goes bizarrely awry. Um, as far as air superiority goes, I really just want it in zone A right now. Maybe I could try for air sector B, too. So, there's planes on the carriers. I might be able to go ahead and let them go. But again, limiting the Grupos limits the number of planes that come into um, battle against me. So, let's see. You know what? I'm going to send for the purposes of this video. I'm going to go ahead and... Hmm. Shoot, I forgot. One of my escorts got kicked down to Georgia. There was subs prowling around, Argentinian subs. All right, I'm going to send my one escort. I'm going to be a little bold here. And I'm going to send it to the landing zone box to get two stacks, hopefully. That's me knocking on wood, by the way. Uh, two stacks fully supplied. Okay, so now I can attack the Grupos. I definitely will send one of my carriers here with the Chilean radar because that adds five to the dice roll. And with that five, basically, there's no way that a carrier can get sunk. Um, it's just not possible. Um, yeah, because even if you roll three snake eyes, that's eight. So that's not a worry. Now the question is, what do I want to do with the other carrier? Do I want to send those planes to fight for air superiority? Or do I want to keep my foot on the Grupos pedal? I'm torn because if I lose one of my carriers, BBC support goes down to zero, and my escort is not going to be as effective with supply. So you know what, just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to play a little conservatively here, and I'm going to save those planes off the Invincible and use them to help air superiority and also not stick my neck out too far. Okay, I'll deal with more Grupos next time too. One thing I don't know if I mentioned last time about the Grupos is, if you already have two of them in a sector, you can't add more. So like if you have two in sector three and you roll a three and a five on the Grupos deployment, only the five gets deployed. The three does not. You don't re-roll. It's just they're out of luck, for lack of a better way to put it. All right, so let's do this attack here on the Grupos. And I rolled, sweet, I rolled 15. Wow, I think it's the highest I've ever had. No, I take that back. I did roll 16 once. 15 plus 5 is 16 or more. So, chaff def deflects, bleh, exit set into the ocean. Okay, so first thing, Grupos goes back to the main line. Yeah. Mainland. Mainline. <laughs> then I get to take one plane out of the Argentinian mainland pool. Let's see what I'm going to get. Come on, big money, big money. I want that plane with the 11 on it. Oh, well, hey, it's, um, there, it's a six. So, all right, that'll work. It's helpful. A round would have been more helpful, but hey, I'll take what I can get. All right. The ship goes in the trala box, as I like to call it. Uh, Exit set total goes down by one. All right. So that's down to three, even better. BBC News goes up by five, so now I'm maxed out on BBC News. You can't go above 19, even though 16 and 5 is 21. And, and there is a note about if they had two or less Exit sets, it's treated, that result is treated as no contact which is actually kind of a bummer, but they had four, so awesome. Okay, so I took care of that. All right, so the Argentinian air assets phase. Now, this is going to be a little different because last time, remember, we didn't have any boots on the ground, so it was always sector E, sector E, sector E, you know, they're covering Port Stanley, which makes sense. This time, though, let's look at this together here now. The air sector, most British ground units, or it would be E. Well, the most British ground units is clearly sector A, which is part of the reason why I held back those three units with the carrier, because I want those three units fighting for me for air superiority on the other side of the game board. The big map, if you will. Okay, now then, let's, um, oh, hold on a second, I forgot to do one thing here real quick. There we go. Sorry, forgot to do one thing that would uh, cause us interruptions. 
Now the Grupos will get to deploy at this point. So again, remember, we roll a single die for priority, and we start from there. So this time it starts with five, and then you just rotate around from there. So the first Grupos is going to be the sixth one. Oh, I'm sorry. The sixth one is actually the target sector. Oh, that's a bit of a bummer. So those two guys are coming over here to sector A. So what did I get? Ouch. Two round rolls and two nines. Yikes. Now we rotate back to sector three, which is sector C. And we're going to put four planes there. Two, four. So four planes in sector C. One round roll. I think I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, somebody can let me know in the comment section. I often thought, you know, when I was teaching social studies, I used to be a social studies teacher, I often thought what I should do to make some money, I should, like, go through just everything I could think of with history and take a book and make a book that's pronunciation of places, you know, like phonetically. And that would be a resource book for teachers. Quick, easy at your fingertips. So, yeah. Still could do it, I guess. Don't be no, nobody steal my idea. Now, sorry, I'm rotating my dice out of the cup there. So we got all the planes deployed. Okay, so there they go. Now, air assets. So let's move over here because now the action is really going to be shifting here to the Falkland map. So let's go ahead here. Now, as you can see, I've got two in sector A. I've got four in sector C, including one round roll, and then there's two in sector D. I am tempted just to put everybody in Sector A, all my British planes, and just say to the Argentinians, come get some, and see. But if I lose air superiority there, that's going to be very bad. How bad? Well, we'll talk about it if it happens. <sighs> yep, you know what? There's no stacking limits. So most important thing right now is trying to get my people moving. <sighs> they can only move up to two spaces without helicopter support. I know this kind of getting ahead of things here, but I'm trying to think ahead. Do I really want to put anybody in Sector B? I don't want to put anybody in Sector B just yet. So you know what? Let's just take everybody and their mother from the British Task Force. And this might be a little bit of, as men at work would say, overkill. But again, I want to get my people moving. So yeah, I don't care. I don't care if I can't get to sleep. I think about the complications of diving in too deep. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, I overloaded that. Now we got to see the Argentinian reaction. So first we locate the Rome's. Well, sorry. First we check out the Juntas. So, the Junta plane. Um, there are two round rules that are not in the Sector A box. So let's see what they're going to do. Let's see. It's a die roll of three. Three says Navy plan. Navy. So the leave the planes where they are. Okay, good. So nobody else is coming yet. Anyway, hold that thought. Remember from last time, we could have two visitors coming from Sector C, not from Sector D, because even if you move people around, you must leave the two weakest planes behind in any air sector. So, let's see here now the reaction. What are going to do? Survey says four. Of course. So move all eligible planes to Sector A. Alright, so again, we already said, Sector D only has two planes. Now, Sector C, we leave the two weakest planes behind, which is going to be this bottom two, these six and this four, and the nine and the six are coming over here. Woo! This is going to be one big air battle. So let's focus back over there. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Hey, you want to zoom in? Let's zoom in. Yeah! Let's zoom in on the action. All right. You know what? Let me just move the tripod. It's easier than turning it all the time. All right. So here we go. Yeah. All that's affecting what's going on above it, too. Don't kid yourself. All right. Now. So they moved. The, the ace pilot is not on the map. He's actually having his plane repaired. So he gets to save face this time, so to speak. And... Uh, we're ready to fight air battles. So here we go. The only air battle is Sector A, the big battle, the battle royal, if you will. So we determine sides. Again, the British are always the attackers unless there's a combat result that flips and puts the Argentinians as the attackers. Call for ground support. Well, let's see here now. The Argentinians will get one because they have this unit up here. Oh, let me back out a little bit. Just for a minute, I'll back out for a moment. 
show you. Up there at the top they have this ground unit, any ground unit that is either revealed or not revealed gets to add one level to them. And then they also will get it for the airstrip, but remember the sauce took care of that for me. Good job, lads. Now, for the British side. Basically, the British side is pretty easy. Settlements are a big help to you. Um, settlements look like... Yeah, I guess we could talk about that real quick. Let me just show you that real quick. Since I've been talking about some of this stuff. Settlements... Whoops, wrong way. Settlements are right here. Like, uh... The... Here. The Swan Inlet House. See this symbol here? That is the one that is the settlement. So if the British control any settlements, that gives them some extra help. Right now, in Sector... A, nothing doing. So, nothing going on from there. But, we have boots on the ground. And boots on the ground gives a benefit to the British. So, that will move them up one space on their ground support track. The only other thing would be naval gunfire, and we don't have that going on. Okay, so, we've gone to ground support. Ace reaction. Well, there's none of that to do. The Argentinian ace is sitting at home, sipping coffee and my two aces are already there total the strength points here we go so the british have one two hold on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve times seven i'm pretty sure it's 84 math was never my strong point if math wasn't your strong point and you're a war gamer make sure you have a good calculator nearby or make sure your phone is fully charged that's my recommendation so let me just double check that because i am yep it's 84 okay i do remember at least that much all right so 84 and oops i forgot the ground support so actually 88 88 versus let's see 27 and 6 that would be 33 36 so 88 to 36 so that comes out to basically 244%. So we're using the 200% column. So the next one's over 300. All right, here we go. And again, when you're on the attack, the higher the better. Come on, baby. Big money, big money, big money, big money. No whammies. Oh, it's a two. Okay, two turns into a dog fight. Now, what does that mean? Well, as it says here in the rule book, so initial attack is parried. The defenders launch a bold counterattack, refight. Now the Argentinians are the attackers. Roll on 100% column, ignore everything else. Ground support, real odds, everything else. So, now, since the Argentinians are attacking, this die roll, of course, I want to be all about limbo. How low can you go? Hey, they rolled a one. Ho, oh, ho, attacker eliminated. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean the British just shot everything down like the Great Marianas turkey shoot. No. That means that oh, they all went home. Bye-bye. But that's also good. Because remember, if you remember from last video, anytime you have three or more Argentinian planes in the repair pool, hey, 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 lowest one is bye-bye. See you later. Hasta la vista, baby. Sorry. I didn't get too many movie quote references in this video, I think. So, but this worked out great. I did a little bit of overkill. So I did end up kind of you know, pounding things, I'm, you know, hitting an ant with a sledgehammer, but I wanted to make sure that I had air superiority over Sector A, because that's important to me right now. All right. So now we're, we're done. We're finished. Now we go to the grounds phase. So this is what you've all been waiting for with this video. So maybe I should have led all this other stuff up and just picked up from the ground support phase. But I figured, you know, I'd go ahead and show you another turn, too. Why not? All right, here we go. <coughs> so now the ground support. First of all, supply situation here so bbc lose level is seven or lower nope okay if it's air turn the british do not have air superiority in these three sectors whoops so i guess i did need to spread some planes out whoopsies okay i don't have air superiority in three sectors uh oh all right here we go and there are any british escorts in san carlos now they attack those escorts uh oh oh no all right now we gotta roll a die, but hey, look at the bright side. This is showing you more of the game, right? Because I didn't, I didn't come up with the perfect strategy. So we roll the die, and now we gotta add to it the number of groupos there, and then we gotta see 
what happens on the San Carlos strike table. So, all right. So what did I roll here? Hang on a second. What came up here? I came up as a three. All right. So three plus four is seven. Uh oh. British frigates damaged or sunk in sharp action. Subtract the die roll from the BBC. Ah. Oh. 19 minus 7 is 12. Grr. Retreat the escort from San Carlos to the Trollo box. That's a bummer, man. See, there I go again. That's a big Lebowski. I get it. Okay. All right. So that's no good. All right. <laughs> Let me just make sure I did all that right. Roll a die. Add a number of group of units currently in the seasons. Okay. Alright. Alrighty. So had a little problem there. But it's not the end of the world. Okay, so now the ground pass. Alright. Now, again, some of the pass, and this is mentioned, you know, watch even though they seem to weave, your most important thing is watch the numbers, you know, just follow them in numerical order, so to speak. So let's get up here to San Carlos now. And we're going to come out just a little bit so you can see most of Sector A. And we'll move it over this way a little bit, too. There we go. All right. Now, so now we're going to be able to move, okay? There's two types of movement here. There are helicopters, which I don't have yet because, remember, I had my horrible helicopter die roll. So what I'll do now is we'll go over yomping, okay? So now... And with Yomping, if it's supplied, which so far my guys um, are supplied at this point, or at least two of the stacks are supplied, so one stack was unsupplied, so we'll go with this, this lightest one here to start with to be unsupplied. So, because remember the Escort only got to supply two whenever it was, it was there dropping off its supplies. And a stack can have as many units as you want in it, but they stick together and they go together. They move together as a team. So, yomping. I think I'm pronouncing that right. All right. So, you can move up to two camps, which are basically the spaces on the map. So, this is a camp, this is a camp, that's a camp, that's a camp, etc. All right. Now, however, have to stop whenever it reaches a block, okay? Now... A couple of things here. Can't move if you have air superiority in the sector where it begins its move. Hence why I was so obsessed with having air superiority in sector A. Because all my boys are in sector A. i got to get my lads out of there if I'm going to win this thing. Now, a mountain camp, which is the little mountain symbol. One here, one here. That can go ahead and also stop you too as a block. It depends, alright? So, I've been mentioning this word block. So let's talk about what are blocks. So blocks come in a couple of different variations here. It can have an Argentinian ground unit, okay? Um, it also could be an air sector where there is one of the two air units on the map here that are stationed, like the Pebble Beach, or Pebble Island, Pebble Beach, Pebble Island, where, I think I'm going to go, Pebble Island where I drove them off with the sauce, okay? Um, or it can be one that has any Argentinian planes in it, which I don't have any Argentinian planes in Sector A. All right. So now we can go ahead and start moving. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving my two stacks. So first of all, let me zoom in here a little bit now that we're on the move. Okay. And there we go. So these guys are going to move first. Now this is a hostile unit, so it's a block they have to to stop. So we got to find out what that is. So we flip it. Let's see what it says. Oh, it is an enemy unit. So if it's an enemy unit that's there, then there's going to be combat there. And there's going to be, that's it. Now, if it was something else, there's some other options too. Uh, there's patrols, there's minefields, then other things can happen. You can keep moving, but it's an enemy combat unit, so I cannot continue to move. Now, I'll move this stack into the Verdi Hills. Now that is a mountain space, so now we have to check that because mountain space could um, cause a 
block. And one other thing about blocks is weather does affect things when it comes to the air rules uh, for obvious reasons. So here we go. So I roll a die. C. Oh, of course. I rolled a one or a two. Now what does that mean? Well, that means if I move into this mountain spot and I can go ahead and I have to stop. Now I could keep going if I wanted to take supplies from another path, but I can't do that because I've already moved the supplies from those guys. So these guys unfortunately are done. So, all right, not so good. Not really getting out of the landing zone very well. All right, that's life. What are you gonna do? Now, let's do ground combat here because we do have one ground combat to do. So let's zoom in on that one even more. Whoops. There they are. Okay. So, and I'll separate these two British units here just to show you. Yikes. Ooh, yikes, yikes, yikes. This is going to be a little dicey. You'll see why in a second when I go over this combat. Okay. So let's go ahead over the ground combat procedure. All right. So with the ground combat, basically you total up the strength points and each side rolls a die. So let me go ahead and roll my dice over here. Uh, oh, good die roll for me, because I'm using red for the Argentinians, and I'm using my my elite dice, my fighters, so to speak, that I always use when it's, I'm playing whatever side here. So, good ratio there, five versus one. That's very good for us. So let's go over the combat modifiers, which are on the um, charts and tables card, and I'll just go over them out loud rather than just showing you the whole card and doing that. So, with the five, okay, we take that and now we add any other factors to it, okay? So, most of the factors, by the way, affect the British. There's very few that affect the Argentinians. So, the British will get two more for air superiority in the air sector, so that gives us a total of seven now. Uh, let's see, no ground port, no KLF, Weather's not fog or squalls. BBC News is 16 or higher. Uh, I could have had something for that. BBC News is 6 or lower. Well, that's also not a problem because we're on 12. Diplomacy markers on the map. The Pope is around. So the Pope's going to cancel out. Yeah, the Pope's going to cancel out my air superiority. Can you believe that one? So 7 and 5 is 12. So my ground support, my ground factors, I add on now the die roll. So 7 and 5 is well, just make sure I got that right. Yep. Okay. Now, for the Argentinians, well, they have a 7 plus 1 is 6. So, they're not going to get anything else here uh, because there's no air units in the sector. They don't have air superiority. Uh, well, hold on a second. got to check and see, is this a mountain space? No, it is not a mountain space. So, they would get help if it was a mountain space. All right. So, it's going to basically be 12 to... Eight. 12 to 8 altogether, which is going to be a British victory. Jolly good. All right, now what does that mean? If the British wins, raise the BBC News total by 3. 5 if there's a settlement. Well, there's no settlement there, so we go up by 3, so it takes us up to 15. Excellent. Now, what else also happens? Now, it depends on the Argentinian unit, okay? If the Argentinian unit has a red or white star, it has surrendered. Remove it from the game. Yes! So bye bye guys, because they had, I'm sure as you can see from a second ago, they had a white star. I'll get the dice out of the way here. Okay, so ground combat is now over. Now, that's it. That's all there is to the ground combat part of this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, once you get the hang of the chart, you'll know which ones um, affect you and which ones don't. Again, most of them affect the British. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish out the turn, just finish this video off again, you know, just for completeness sake. So we finished the ground combat, so not so good. Um, yeah, we're only moved out one space so far on two tracks. We got to get yomping quickly. All right, let's finish the turn. So here we go. So I'm going to zoom back out. Oop. All right, here we go. Zooming out. And I'll go ahead and centralize this more because there's a good chance the news events are going to affect the big table instead of the big map. Or I should just say the strategic map versus the operational map. So, here we go. Last phase of the turn. Victory? Nope. <laughs> Not a chance. Because remember, we got to be all the way over here. 
we got to control those three if we're going to win this thing. Ah, let's see. We already did the landing. Unflip British ground units, and all British ships move back to the TEZ box. So we flip these guys back over, who were my sole unsupplied stack over there this turn. And now all my British ships are heading back to their spot. Okay. Um, Admiral Anya directs his... Well, that's not a direct. Oh, the parts shorted. So the weakest plane is gone. And guess what? That's time. It's six. Awesome. Okay. Now remember, the rest of it is basically based on weather as far as how many airplane units you get prepared. The British have a crew advantage, so they always get one back, basically, no matter what the weather is, I believe. Yes, regardless of weather. So this one plane... We had a little accident at the end of last turn. Um, what's that called? Collision. Yes, 13-12 collision. So that's repaired. Now it is fair weather, so all the planes from the Argentinian repair pool go back. So, so although we bounced them all out, so to speak, they are back. All right. So we're done with that. Political factors. Let's take a look there. We would remove the Pope. Well, we're not, he's not on the current game turn. He's way ahead of us. He's going to be around for a while. Diplomacy marker. Don't have that around. The Chilean radar. we got to remove the Chilean radar from the big... Sorry, from the strategic map. I think it was a big map because it's the big picture. But technically speaking, and as sure as you can clearly see, that map is smaller than the other. All right, headlines. Let's see. See how many rolled enough to remember this kind of thing. So... Turn is a 9, and 5 is 14. So, let's go here. First things first, see what the Allies are up to. Any help from our friends? The French president tightens the arms embargo. Discard one Argentinian DM or SE plane of the player's choice. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Yes. So, DM or SE. Oh, 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 I'm definitely going with the SC, because look at that. It's got a combat value of 11. Bye bye because it did say player's choice. Cool. So, thank you, our French friends. Um, merci. There we go. All right. BBC linking... Secrets. Did they? No, it's a die roll of two, so good. The Argentinians didn't know what to do with it. All right, this is the Gurkhas thing here. If this event occurs first time, um, and there's camps, there's forces on camps that are. So the Gurkha unit from Ascension Island goes with a stack. You know what? I want to put them up here because these guys obviously are fairly weak. So we're going to put them on that track where the battle was because that was a little... Too close for comfort, so to speak. Okay, Sidewinders. Well, I don't have to worry about Sidewinders anymore. Sidewinders is a great event. You want it because that's how you get the planes from Ascension Island to your carriers. But I had that event several times, and they're all there. Ah, Pinochet's Revenge. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. This is good no matter which way it goes. Depending on the situation, though, you want my odd or even. So I'll just go over both parts here. So I rolled an odd one. An odd one. Why is that so cool? Because then I get to put that Chilean radar out again. And guess what? It's going in the space where the more most groupos are, logically. Now, if the die roll was even on that, it's also very good because you can remove three Argentinian roundo planes from anywhere to the repair box. So that's also cool, too. I just prefer to pound down the groupos because if the groupos don't exist, planes don't get to the map anyway. You know, it's a logical chain, so to speak. Now, next event. Papal visit. Well... That already happened. It can only happen once a game. John Paul's already going around doing what he does, which is, you know, important. I'm not bad mouthing or belittling. I just I'm looking at this perspective of the British military commander. Look, I you know, as the old saying goes, a wise king avoids war when he can, but is always prepared for it. So I'm all about the whole peace and things, what the Holy Father does, but from the perspective of this game as the British commander, I got a war to win. So, with all due respect, I got to win this thing. So, he'll be affecting us for a little while now. And then the wets undermine old Maggie. So, what does that mean? 
That means there's internal cabinet debate. So subtract three from the BBC World News. So, which, since it's on 15, that's not a disaster right now. But still, <clears throat> they are all wet, undermining my efforts. Yeesh, you know. If you quit undermining me, I could get this over with and we could bring the boys home and we could finish this. All right. Off my soapbox here. Last thing, of course, as always, is the air scramble. So all my British planes return to the exclusion zone. So there's my two aces. And I'll take three of my HI planes. And I just like to do it this way. I mean, you know, you can do whatever suits you and fits you best. But I put three of them under the Invincible and three under the Hermes because um, you have to have three to attack the Grupos. So that way you don't forget. I just put them underneath because then it puts them out of play, basically when you stack them in this box. So, here comes everybody else back. The Argentinian planes that are left on the map, they're gonna scramble back home to the cup, to the mainland, and we'll shake them up a little bit, the cars, shake it up. And we are ready for the next turn. I always do that. I don't know why I always twip back to the headline side. It's like, I feel like that's the last thing. I don't know. It must be reflex action from some other games. So we're up to turn 10. By the way, turn 10 has an important rule. That's why the Argentinian flies on the track regarding air units. So keep that in mind. And just to end our video here, I'll do my weather roll so I'm ready for the next turn. And again, I'll mark it and mark it. Which again, as a solitaire player, I highly recommend you have some kind of highly visible item to remind you where you left off. And there, another turn. Now, real quick here, before I sign off on this video, um, just a couple of comments about the game itself. Um, I do like the game. It is definitely a more land-centric game of the Falkland Islands than where there is Discord. Where there is Discord is very much about the naval war, in my opinion, because really, you know, once you start landing the forces in where there is Discord, you don't spend a whole lot of time. They just got to get on the beach, so to speak. You know, you don't have to send them inland any place. You're just trying to secure the landing zones. That's that's your goal. That's how you measure victory in that game. So it is very much about getting your task force to where they need to be and then setting up the invasion. And then it's over. This game, you've got to yomp your way across the island or get your helicopters, which has taken me forever again in this game with that die roll of six. But hey, what are you going to do? you got to get it the whole way across the map. So in my opinion... This game is a little tougher because you have to get all three of those, but I will say that where there is Discord, I think, has some more random events that can really throw you off, and you really have to be careful with the task force deployment there. So, of the two games, I'll say this. They both will stay in my collection because they both deal with the war in a different manner that is unique enough to me that they're both worth keeping. Uh, but both games, to be honest, both games fall into that time-to-time -time category for me. Uh, you know, I pull them out every once in a while when I, you know, think about it. Like, oh, I haven't played this for a while. Or, you know, when I think about the Falkland Islands because something pops up somewhere, you know. Uh, I'll pull it out. But it's not a game that, you know, I'm going to be playing like every month or every other month or, or stuff like that. That being said, I do like the game. Uh, as always with White Dog, I love their counters. Their counters are so nice and big and thick. Um, especially the thick part. Uh, what I should do, I should do a video of Red Menace, which was published by White Dog Games, too. Um, those counters are just awesome. That's actually a cool game, too. But if you don't know Red Menace, Red Menace is uh, basically bomber combat, Cold War. There's no... Well, I take that back. This, there are... Missile consideration is there in the form of SOBMs, but uh, it's basically a bomber fight is what that game is. That wouldn't be a good video, I think. I'll have to put that on the list. Now, other things here about this particular game is it is kind of like Mr. Madison's other designs. It does take a little bit to wrap your head around. Um, I really think, and this is my personal opinion, I really think that White Dog Games in general would benefit by having an extended example of play. Um, and I also think it would be good, like for example, in this game, you know, I didn't know how all these people in Essentia Island got into the game until I really played it. It doesn't really tell you in the outlay. So, 
you know, it might be nice to have like an intro play saying these are the different page, these are the different kind of units. You know, your your extra planes will come in by the Sidewinder event. So that way you're not sitting around being like, dude, I got all these awesome planes up here, but I can't use them. Why is that? Well, that's because you didn't get the headline event that you need yet. So I will say that. Now, the flip side is this. The rulebooks for White Dog games usually, to my opinion, are written well once you get your head wrapped around. Once you have your head wrapped around what's going on with the system and the concept and stuff, then you can find the answers you're looking for. Uh, and if not, you can always use, of course, Board Game Geek as clarification. I posted, I think, about five things about this game to clarify um, with supply rules and a few other issues I had, too, when I was going through the game. And, you know, that, again, that's part of my point with this is this part of this is to be educational. You know, I, I am an educator by nature. And, you know, if I'm making this video and you see I did something wrong, hey, put it in the comment section. You know, so somebody else doesn't make the same mistake I did. So I don't make the same mistake I did. So next time I have a better game and a better gaming experience, psh, I don't care about that. You know, I do ask you to do it politely. I mean, there's no reason to be like, hey, you know what, Corsnoy, you're a moron. Well, don't do it that way. But, you know, I think respectful, you know, um, discourse is always helpful. And again, you know, if you make a mistake, it's kind of like think back when you were in school, you know, math class and stuff. You make a mistake, somebody else shows you, hey, you didn't do this first. You should have done that. You know, that's part of the educational process. So, again, if I made any mistakes, by all means, you know, go ahead and mention something in the comments section. So, I'll end this by saying a couple of things. First, uh, I do like this game. If you have interest in the Falkland Island War, you should get this. I think you would enjoy it. If you like Mr. Madison's other two games, Don't Tread on Me and End the Napoleonic Wars, I would also recommend this. It is a similar feel um, to it, although the systems themselves are obviously different. So, again, this game will stay in my collection. It is a time-to-time -time game. Basically, I have, you know, several categories of games as far as... Well, I guess you could say I have four categories when it comes to game. I play it at least once a year, for sure, no matter what, because it's such an awesome game. It's a time-to-time -time game, which will come out, you know, every so often. It's a once-in-a-great-while game, which is worth having, but, hey, you know, it might show up, I don't know, you know once every couple of years maybe and then of course trade block is the last one because this game is just not for me hey it might be for somebody else though mind you so i don't i don't rip games too hard unless it's something really really epically bad um what's the first thing that comes to mind is um oh sugar what is that last game in four roads to moscow give me a second it's um strike the bear that's it strike the bear four roads to moscow that is an example of a game that I would badmouth. And if you look at my review under Four Roads to Moscow, uh, I did a review of all four games because I played all four games in that in that package. That game was epically bad. Sorry, but it 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 was trying to be innovative, but it didn't work. Let's just put it that way. So, last thing here is this. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going next. Uh, I have been looking at and eyeballing. War in the Pacific by White Dog Games, which I bought last year because I was looking forever, eternally, for an excellent go-to game for the Pacific Theater, which is across the Pacific, but it's so big, I'm still looking for one that's a little smaller. Uh, yeah, I know, Victory in the Pacific, um, which I like, but I want something a little bit more. So I am looking at that, but I also just picked up a copy of Fire in the Sky, um, so that's on its way, so maybe I'll do that. And in the meantime... You know, while I'm reading those rule books and wrapping my head around things, maybe I will go ahead and do a video of, like, Red Menace or something like that. Or, um, um, what was that other white dog game I was thinking about just a minute ago? Uh, I was on the tip of my tongue. I'm looking at my collection here. Um, oh, the Dunkirk game. Hmm. It eludes me now. A, um, oh, a Spoiled Victory, that one. That's, that's a fun game, too. So... I'm going to end this because I'm kind of rambling a little bit, and I don't want to do that either and waste your time. So, this is Tim Korchnoy from Bare Bones Wargaming, wishing you victory and good times in your games. And I'll see you again soon with another game to, again, help where I can to give you the experience of the game and to help with any kind of mistakes that um, I might be making or mistakes that can help... There are things that can help you avoid mistakes 
so you have a good gaming experience. Until next time, with whichever game I decide to pull off here, we'll see. Uh, I'll see you then, and as always, thanks for watching.